What's going on guys? Welcome back to another makeup tutorial with your host, Killer Keemstar. As you can see, there's a different background today. Looks different. I'm at Alyssa's house right now. A couple of you guys wanted to see this video in the comments, so I decided I would make it as I cannot service my route due to it being Christmas break, as many of you guys know. Today I'm going to talk about the day that I was moving around my vending machines, taking them out of places, putting them back in new places, and it was actually a really crazy day. A lot of stuff happened. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. Alright, so if you watch my last two videos, you know how much I make every month for my vending machine business and you know how I actually got my vending machine route. I would watch those two before you watch this one. So we started off the day, we went to Home Depot. It was probably like seven in the morning. We went to Home Depot and we rented a truck with a lift gate. Um, when I say we, I mean the guy I bought it from and me. I think it was like a hundred or two hundred dollars to rent it for the day. So. We rented that truck. It was a pretty big truck. I think it was a 16 by something. It was pretty big. After we got the truck, we headed to the first location. And we had five machines we had to take out. And we had three machines that we needed to place that day. If you guys have moved machines, you know it's really difficult. This is the first time that I've ever moved machines or anything. So on top of that, I have to take out five and I have to place three. So pretty loaded day for my first day moving machines. Of course, I had the guy there to help. Um, he did it. He, of course, knew how to do it. Um, and he had like a dolly and everything. So that made it easier. Anyways, we go to the first location. We talk to them and everything goes pretty smoothly of course we had to uh, talk to some janitors because it was at a school and the double doors were too small so we had to get a janitor to come and unscrew the little bar in the middle to so that way that the vending machine could fit through the door and we had to do that pretty much to every school um, it was really annoying because some of them you have to have a, a key from the janitor and some of them you have to actually have a screwdriver and manually screw them out so that was annoying let alone all the kids or you know school's going on like school's in session there's kids going around we have to be careful for the kids and everything do not want a vending machine to fall on a kid um, that would probably be the end of my career after that so we go to the first school we go to the teachers lounge and it's a really 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 tight squeeze um, it's a long narrow hallway and then you turn and then there's a door and then there's a vending machine in the lounge. And what we had to do was we had to buy these little discs to put under the vending machine legs. So that way it was easier to scoot across the carpet. And let me tell you, shimmering the vending machine through the doorway was so hard. Um, I can't put into words how complicated it was, but it was really complicated. So we got it through. We pushed all the way down the hallway, put it on the dolly, took it out the door, and we put it onto the lift gate and put it into the truck. You know, pretty smooth, but of course it was hard. This is machine one. We get it loaded up in the truck, and I'm, ta I'm talking to him as we're in the truck. I'm like, don't you think we should, you know, like strap it to the side of the truck so it doesn't fall over or anything? And he goes, uh, no, I've done this so many times, it, it won't fall over. And I was like, you sure? And he was like, yeah, it'll be okay. And in my head, I, I should have just done it just in case, because why not? Stupid me, I was like, okay. Walked out of the truck, went to the inside of the truck, and we go on. We're driving about maybe five, ten minutes. All of a sudden, we hear a loud, boom, and the whole truck shakes. I'm like, oh my gosh. Both of us, we both turn and look at each other, and we already knew what happened. So we pulled over, we went to the back, we opened it up, and there it was. My snack machine laying flat down, face first, glass down, and I was like, oh my gosh. That machine is like totaled. Like, that machine is shot. It was a 
perfectly good working machine that just got toasted. All of the rows, all the snack rows flew forward, all the clips busted, all the motors were knocked out of place, Every, all the, uh, there were so many plastic shards scattered everywhere, um, it messed up the coin mech, it messed up the whole door, so it's like crooked, and yeah, that was the start of the day, so I was like, oh my, this is like, probably at this time, 9, 9.30, I'm like, this is going to be a really long day. Then we go to the next school, same thing, it's a really tight squeeze. We go down to the teacher's lounge, we get it out. This one was, you know, pretty much like the first one, tight squeeze, small door frame, janitors had to unlock the, uh, the metal bar in the middle so we could get through. And then we loaded that one up, up the lift gate and into the truck. This time we strapped it, then we went to another school now this school was one that he was telling me before we even got there he was like look this school they hate me i have not i've been dodging their calls i've been they've been wanting this machine out for so long and they've been messaging the the guy that i bought it from for so long so whenever we got there they were very very heated Get there we tell them, the front desk, that we're, th we're here to move the vending machine. The secretary walks out. The secretary sees the guy, and she straight up says, I don't even want to talk to him. Like, she's talking to me, but he's right here hearing everything. She says, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to look at him. He's dodged it so many times. He's done it so wrong. All this stuff, as he's just standing there. And she, like, says with, hi to me or whatever. That was that. And then she goes on. She's like, yeah, the machine's over here. So we go, we move the machine, and of course it had to be at this school. The machine wouldn't fit through the door. So we, so we literally had to unscrew those big wooden doors that the schools have. Um, and they're so heavy. I didn't realize how heavy those things were, but they're massively, massively, massively heavy. So we, luckily he had a drill with them and we're drilling we're drilling out the screws we're drilling out the screws and we literally get all the way down to the last one and let me add there's like 20 screws there's so many screws we get to the last one and it's stripped it doesn't come out it won't it won't pull all the way out and it was just stuck there so we couldn't get the door off so i was like crap so then we had to screw everything back in and try and think of another way. So we were thinking, we were thinking, and what we came up with is we were gonna actually open the vending machine door, put the vending machine door through the, the hallway door to get it out and just pivot it around. And it was such a tight squeeze. It was like scraping the, the side of the doorway. And we finally, we were, we were getting it around, and then we pushed it, and there was a little light switch right here. We pushed it, and it jammed into the light switch, busted the light switch. So I was like, oh my god. Out of all the schools, had to be this one where the lady is, like, already mad at us. It had to be this school. So we finally, we get it out. Light switch is busted, and we get it onto the dolly, and we're taking it out, and... Then the, we get to the, the double doors where the janitor has to get the key to take out that metal bar. Of course, the key was not working for some reason. The metal bar was getting stuck and it wouldn't come out. So we're stuck there trying to figure out something to do. The janitor's sitting there for literally 10 minutes trying to unscrew it. At this point, the secretary comes out and is wondering you know, what's taking so long you know, is pretty heated. Finally, the guy that I'm with that I bought the vending machine from, he he gets the key from the uh, janitor and does it himself and somehow he pops it out, which is, I'm like, thank God. And we get it out and we load it up in the machine and that's that. But as we're leaving, the one of the front desk ladies says, stay here. One of the teachers said that the door is not shutting or something. And I'm like, oh my God. So I'm sitting there waiting for the secretary to come out and then she goes to look at the door to figure out why it's not shutting. 
and I know in the back of my head why it's not shutting. The screw that was stripped, it wouldn't go all the way back in, which was causing it to kind of jam. And she came back and she was like, oh, it's probably just the little metal box on the top that whenever you, you guys know what I'm talking about, it's the metal box on the top and whenever it shuts, it causes it not to slam, it kind of slows it down before it closes. She thought it was that thing that was just messing up. And I was like, she was, and then she came back and she was like, yeah, you can just go. Like, it's fine. They didn't mention anything about the light, which I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we got out of there and it was on to the next school. Then as we leave that school, he goes, you know, let's just, uh, he's like, let's meet up my friend at the bar or something, you know, let's have a couple of drinks. And I was like, I mean, all right. I mean, I don't think he knew that I was underage, but he was like, yeah, let's just go. I was like, yeah, sure. And I didn't tell him, you know, I was like, whatever. And so we go to the bar. We originally were just gonna have one drink and head out, but the bartender gave me another one and I was like, all right, I guess I'll just have two. So I ended up drinking two beers, chilling at the bar for a little bit, which, you know, I was like, I know. This is a pretty cool day. I'm 19, I'm at the bar, I'm moving my vending machines, you know, I got my vending machine business started, hanging out at the bar, you know, things are going pretty cool. I feel like I've moved up a notch in life. Then I had two beers. I don't drink a whole lot, so I'm kind of feeling a little bit tipsy after the second one. And then we still had the whole other half of the day we had to get after. After we leave the bar, I call up the next location. And I'm like, hey, this is um, Parker. I just bought the uh, snack machine route from so-and-so. Uh, I heard you guys wanted me to take it out. We're on our way to come take it out. And they go, wait, like, um, Jenny's son, which is my mom. So the, Jenny's son, Parker? And I'm like, yeah. So it turns out my mom actually works at this school that we're heading to to take the machine out. And she goes, oh, wait a minute. I didn't know it was you. She goes, yeah, you can keep the machine here. Just, uh, you know, meet up sometime next week and we can discuss about uh, keeping the machine here and, you know, commission and stuff. And I was like, sweet. So literally, such a small world. My mom works at this school and I'm able to keep the machine there. Just what are the odds that this route that I'm buying from happens? One of the machines happens to be at the school that my mom works at. It was just crazy. So I ended up keeping that machine there. Thankfully, it's pretty good school. It's still there. After that, I think that was it with us moving out the machines. Then it was, it got to us actually taking the machines into the schools. Of course, I'm kind of feeling, you know, a little tipsy. And I'm going to these schools with this guy and we're taking in the machines. Everything was pretty much smooth sailing from there. Um, we placed three machines that day. Everything was good. Everything was smooth sailing from there. After that, uh, if you guys watch my other videos, you know that I have a lot of other machines in storage. So we went to this guy's storage unit in downtown Houston, and he had literally rows and rows and rows of vending machines, like so many, at this massive warehouse. And I think if I have videos of it, I'll put them in the video. Yeah, so then we were actually moving some of those machines into from his storage into my storage. So we we're loading them. We loaded up like eight of them, which super hard it was hot and you know, the machines are heavy it was a lot of work i wish i i would have filmed it but i didn't like an idiot so we, we loaded those up and we're heading to my storage now keep in mind my storage closes at 10 my storage closes at 10 o'clock and as we're literally like five ten minutes away i <laughs> i realized in my head i'm like wait a minute I don't have the code with me to get into the gate. I, it was like nine o'clock at this time. My storage closes at 10. We got all these machines loaded up and I forgot the code to get into the gate. I'm like scrambling, thinking what to do. There's, I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna tell him after we just drove like an hour from his storage to my storage that I forgot the gate, I forgot the code and we spent all the time loading up the machines and we can't even get in. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And then I get the light bulb. Turns out my girlfriend's mom has the same storage unit as me. 
like as fast as I can. I go, I text, I text my girlfriend, hey, you know, what's the sto- what's the code to the storage unit? And she's looking, she's looking, she can't find it. She literally, it's just like I'm sweating. I'm like, oh my god, I still haven't told him. And then literally, as we're pulling up to the gate, my girlfriend sends me a text with the code. My phone was on one percent. There was no charger. I was literally like, like this is it. Like, I just what a what a way to end the day, you know. But luckily, with one percent, I get the text from my girlfriend. I write it down on like my hand or something because I'm scared my phone's gonna die. And then I just read it off to him and we get in, we unload the machines, pretty much it. And I know it might not sound as crazy in video form for you guys, but that day for me was absolutely insane. Um, Absolutely crazy and I hope I covered everything. If you guys have any other questions about that day, drop them in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them. But other than that, that's all I had. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.